Okay, welcome everybody. Um, you know, this this uh, this weekend is uh, is is one of the probably you know most exciting uh, uh, probably events that that and, and one of the reasons why we're so excited about being in the Big Twelve. Uh, it, it, you know, being able to start you know, going into the third year, uh, being able to start with uh, a team like uh, Oklahoma is awesome. Uh, our, our guys are excited about it. Couldn't quit talking about it on Sunday night. Uh, you know, I think we're, we're anxious for the opportunity, uh, fired up about the opportunity. I know that's going to uh, uh, play a bit, you know, with the fan base, with the atmosphere that's going to exist Saturday night. I think it's going to be great. I know we're expecting a sellout uh, night game, you know, second night game of the year. We're going to be we're going to be pretty fired up about that. Student capacity, I know, is already. Uh, you know exactly where it, where it should be for, for games like this. Uh, you know it's going to be awesome. You know we're, we're we're kind of in a good spot right now with our team. Uh, you know big win last week. Uh, got to two two and one. Uh, being able to uh, host the number four team in the country. I don't know if it gets any better than that. So uh, looking for our guys to have an awesome week. Uh, be uh, you know preparation be great. Uh, uh, the effort. I know we're gonna we're gonna play hard. We've done that for three weeks in a row. Uh, our kids' energy has been has been great. Can't, can't ask anything more out of them. So, um, just just where we're at and, and what's ahead of us, I think everybody should be is, is excited about it. As the coaching staff and our players are, and I know Oklahoma will be as well. Uh, when I think of Oklahoma, Coach Stoops, um, ton of respect for him. Uh, it has accomplished uh, you know more in his already career than than you know is is, is expected out of anybody. They're three and zero. They're good on all three sides of the ball. Their program is, is obviously in a healthy place. Uh, uh, won national championships, Big 12 championships, bowl games. Uh, you know, their, their coaching staff has, has a ton of continuity. Uh, their schemes have been the same for, for uh, going on a, a bunch of years. Coach Hype on offense, uh, Mike Stoops on defense. Guys do a, do a great job. <coughs> and uh, they recruit well, and so they got great players as well. So. Uh, but when you think of them, it, it, to me, it's always been not 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 about their defense. Their offenses have been extremely potent. Uh, but uh, you know, just because Coach Stoops is a defensive guy, I always kind of attribute his teams to a hard-nosed mentality, defensive mentality. Uh, they're every bit as good as they are they were on defense a year ago. Uh, they finished the year well on defense. They they get to the quarterback. A, a much much different team, different scheme <clears throat> than what we saw two years ago in 2012 here. Uh, they do a great job of getting to the quarterback. <coughs> Their D-line is relentless. Uh, it seems like every dang D-line we play uh, here uh, in the month of September has been relentless. But uh, they do a great job of getting to the quarterback. Uh, got great pass rushers. You know, the, the, the striker kid is an outside linebacker. You know, they got four guys that are bigger than him that do a great job rushing the quarterback and, and putting pressure on him. But he's as good as anybody in the country when it comes to – being disruptive not only in the pass rush but but we'll get into some coverage stuff as well. Um, you know, got great corners, got experience at linebacker and secondary, so uh, we'll, we'll be a challenge for us offensively. Uh, we're 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 clearly better than we were uh, a year ago when we went to Norman on offense, but uh, they're they're probably better on, on all three sides of the ball as well. <laughs> offensively, it starts with their quarterback Trevor Knight's playing playing great. Uh, completely different guy than, than what he was game two a year ago. Uh, he, he's, he's, a, he's throwing the ball better. They're, they're, they've played him a lot in the first three games, even though they've had that, uh, all three of these games in hand easily in the second half. They've played him a bunch, and you can tell that he's making uh, a, a ton of strides to get better. Uh, he'll throw the ball. He'll run the ball. He's, he, they do some run game with him. Uh, you know, Regardless of who's at running back for him, it's always going to look the same. Uh, they've always had two, three, four guys that can go in there and play at a very high level. Uh, that, that's not going to affect anything that we do. <coughs> uh, Receiver-wise, uh, the Shepherd kid uh, is, is is dynamic, as good of a slot guy as we'll face all year. Uh, they, they've always had big uh, athletic guys up front. Uh, they got two NFL tackles. They got you know uh, uh, one of the guards returning, and then the center. They had to replace their all-conference All-American center. Uh, but they're doing it with the coach's kid that, that, that understands what uh, what's going on. Special teams, they're they're solid. Uh, they they pay attention to it. They do a great job with it. They got all seniors. Their their place kicker is one of the best in the country. 
Uh, their punter uh, is a senior who, who's a quality guy. Their, their kickoff guy, which is a separate guy, also a senior, kicks everything into the end zone. And then they're good in the return game. So uh, we're going to have to uh, clean up some things on the punt team. Uh, didn't cover very good last week. Had a challenge, didn't need it. But we did a great job with our kickoff team. Uh, both those units with the coverages are going to have to be uh, uh, on par. And then, and then uh, you know, but we know it's going to be a challenge with them. So that, that's my take. Uh, we'll take some questions. Uh, take some questions. How does Worley's suspension affect what you guys can do defensively? Uh, you know, it, it's uh, it, our you know because our depth is so good. Uh, you know, it doesn't. It, that's no different than any kind of injury that happens or or any of that. So uh, it's the next guy up. I mean, that's the mentality that we've had right now. Uh, next guy up needs to get in there and he needs to play at a high level. If uh, you know, we lose a guy because he's tired. If we lose a guy because he's injured. Uh, if we lose a guy because of graduation or whatever it is, there's guys that need to step up. You know, and so we, we get Icky Banks, uh, Banks back this week, so he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna be able to provide us with depth. Jalen Myers is uh, is a guy that continues to get better. Uh, Chestnut's playing well. You know, he he's he, he he was injured in the game, didn't come back, but it's a bruise. He'll be able to practice all week and be fine. Uh, so I think our corner, you know, a couple of years ago we lined up with, I think it was Icky and Nana, who were, who were our two corners against uh, Oklahoma two years ago when they had some NFL receivers that were pretty good. So our corner, our corner play has been better, our depth has been better, and it, it's no different than when we had four guys go down at running back in the game because we played 108 snaps and guys were tired and guys were dinged up or helmets popped off or whatever it is. Dustin Garrison runs in there and is the player of the game. So that, that, that mentality needs to exist at every level, at every position, uh, on all three sides of the ball. Uh, made a big deal about this with the depth. Uh, you know, why is it important to have 55 guys? We played 61 guys in this game last week against Maryland. That's a lot of numbers. Why is that important? Because you better have guys go in there in the fourth quarter and play at a high level if you want to win. Uh, if you don't have guys go in there in the fourth quarter and play at a high level for the second half or the entire game, uh, then you're not going to win. You know, Maryland's that kind of team, and certainly Oklahoma is as well. Data indefinite. What's that? You know, he's he's uh, his attitude's been great. Um, he, he's been on our scout team for the last three weeks. He's done everything that he's supposed to have been done. He's given us great looks on defense. I'm gonna uh, uh, on our scout team defense. I'm gonna certainly miss him. Obviously, I'd rather have him over on the other side. But uh, he, he's helped our scout team defense in, with with, and he's helped our offense in preparation. Yes. Dana, definitely, it's a weird word. Is there some way in which he could be good to go on Saturday, or is he out for Saturday? He's right now. He's indefinitely suspended. You know, and we're just going to leave it at that. I don't have any other comments other than that. Hey, cornerback depth. You talked about Nana a little bit. But there's several guys that were hurt early. Have played Brandon Napoleon, Richardson, Kid. What was the status on? Him? Okay, so, Napoleon. I was going to. I knew I'd get an injury question, so I'm prepared. <laughs> uh, he just had surgery this morning. Okay, he's been rehabbing a knee. Uh, he's going to be out for the year. Okay, Napoleon. He he he's been rehabbing a knee and it hadn't been getting any better, so we we, we went ahead and cut off. Uh, Keyshawn uh, needs to. Uh, he 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 would he had a knee as well, but it's not surgical. Uh, he's been back for probably a couple of weeks. He just needs to he needs reps and he needs to get better. Nana. Nana was hurt. Okay, uh, he, he, he's been back. He actually probably played two or three snaps on special teams in the game on Saturday. He's a developmental guy that needs to continue to get better. Uh, he, he had, I don't even know what he had, uh, but he was out for probably a week or two and he's coming back. All right, he's been on scout team for the last couple of weeks. Uh, Keyshawn was on scout team a week ago. Why can we put those guys on scout team? Because we have good depth. So we need to evaluate those guys every week like we have, and we will put guys in positions that we feel like can help us win the game. Do you expect Tom Free to play? I'm sorry? Do you expect Tom Free to play? Yes, yes. He, he was a game-time decision on Saturday. We, I know you all saw him down there. He were, we, we worked him out a little bit. We just, we just didn't feel good about it. Why, why, why didn't we panic? Because we put Isaiah Bruce in there, who's started a lot of games around here. Jack Petaway was his backup, and we played well. So, you know, 
That, that's, that's the mentality that needs to exist. And, and if it does, which right now it does, then guys need to go in there and they need to play at a high level and make the most of their opportunities and help us uh, put, put ourselves in a position to win. But the yes, to answer your question, we should be ready to play. <coughs> After watching the film from Maryland, uh, defense played well at times, gave up really big plays at times. In, mm -hmm. in your words, I mean, do you describe what you saw defensively out of your guys? Well, they have good players. So, you know, I mean, you know, we had a busted coverage, and if you do that, Diggs is going to take it. Uh, we, we didn't come out of the, the halftime uh, as, as ready to play as we needed to, and we will address that. And, you know, Brown got loose on us. You know, he's a, he's a good player. Uh, you know, other than those two, I think we played okay. You know, the first half, I don't think we did great on third downs. I don't have the exact numbers. Uh, I thought we needed to do a better job of getting off the field on third downs in the first half. Well, in the second half, it was excellent. It was fantastic. Their last seven possessions they had, they didn't make a first down. That's winning defensive football. So, uh, you know, we're, we're <coughs> you better get used to it. You know, we don't like big plays and, and all that, but there's a lot of good offense that's about to be played in the Big 12. Uh, so you, you have you, – if you give up a play, and the, and the, the, the two, two other things defensively that I was thrilled with, uh, there's never any panic on the sideline. Even when they scored on a, a, a turnover or a punt return, there was never any panic on, on, on our sideline. And our defense went out there and they did their job. Uh, the, you know, we, we know there was four turnovers in the game. They, they scored three points off four turnovers. That, that's winning defensive performance. So you give up some big plays, they score some points. You know, it can't affect how you play. And, and it didn't affect how we played defense. Then you seem to get some good pressure from the defensive line against Maryland. Do you said he can be able to continue that against this veteran line from off from, from Yeah, off. better. I mean they're gonna throw it, so we better we better be able to get some pressure. Pressure seems better than it's been. Brandon Golson played like the guy I know he can play like that. You know, coming off his shoulder. He he didn't play like that the first two games. Uh, he got two sacks. So so that was great to see. Noble played the best game that he's played since he's been here. Uh, he, he got pressure on the quarterback a little bit. You know, Shaq Riddick needs to continue to get better. Uh, you know, so the, 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 we're getting better at it. And, and it's something that regardless of who we play, you know, there, there's going to be passing situations that we need to be able to line up and get to the quarterback. You mentioned that the Maryland game, you thought the offensive line got kind of rolled in. What, what did you see? Yeah, they did. They, you know, they, they were, you know, they were, they were working on their 90 – Fifth, 98, 901st play. So they they were and they played every snap and they played hard. Their effort was great, but they, they it, it wasn't so much of a lull. I think they're just getting a little worn out, you know. And, and and I give Maryland credit. Their their D line, those guys played hard, man. They played hard. So that takes a lot out of you, you know. So I, I was I was I was thrilled with how our five guys went out there on that last drive and they they emptied their tank. Played great and got us in position to be able to, to win the game. Was it speech to the commission? Obviously. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I'd like to think that we can continue to snap the ball over 100 times and those guys play at that kind of level all year. Uh, Mike and his staff done a great job, you know, so uh, yeah, they're, they're where they need to be and they did what they needed to do to help us win. Defensively, um, you, you played Alabama, obviously, known for a pretty good defense. Would I think the argument could be made maybe that Oklahoma's just as good or maybe even better at a lot of the positions. Would do you agree with that or is that maybe too far? I would agree with that. They're 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 both good. They're they're both real good. Um, you know, uh, both comparable last year. They were they were they were very similar last year. Oklahoma's got more people coming back. So you know whether they end up being better or statistically or whatever, it's the same unit. It's the same bodies. It's the same quality of coaching. Uh, it's the same expectations. They're two very, very, very similar. Uh, uh, the expectations are similar on both teams. So, yes, yeah, so whether they're better or whether they're not, I don't know. It's not for me to judge. Uh, we'll, we'll prepare. There's some differences with scheme and, and stuff, as everybody has differences. We will prepare uh, to try to attack this scheme because this is who we play. Is there anything about not just about Clint, but the entire passing game that's that surprised you so far? And nothing surprises me. I've seen it for a long, long time. 
uh, we're just we're in a position where it, it's it, the timing's better. Uh, you know, and I've, I've made a lot of it. The, the rapport with Clint and these guys is a lot better. Our pass protection is night and day different than what it was a year ago. Uh, it, it, you know, we're we're just in a much much better place. You know, it, which is is what our expectations are. We should be able to pass protect like this. We should be able to be accurate with our eyes, Clint. <coughs> And, and throwing the ball, and we should be able to get open and make plays down the field. I was, I was, I was excited to see Mario, Dekeel, Kevin make plays down the field. You know, that, that's that's what our expectations are, and they're getting to the point where they're doing. Not to uh, not to compare your, your two guys now with, with Stephen and Tavon, but is it different, or can you do things differently when you have two outside guys that are playing like this as opposed to an inside and outside guy? Yes, you, you stretch the field better. You can stretch the field better. That that that's extremely important, especially when you're running the ball like we are, uh, to keep those safeties back. Um, you know, there is a pretty good uh, cat and mouse game going on with, with what their safeties were doing and what my eyes were doing and what the plays were getting called. So, uh, to have guys that can stretch the field definitely keep safeties back, which allows you to be able to run the ball better. Offensive football 101. Needed to hear you say it though. Then you mentioned offensive football one on one. You when could you explain a little bit how you have plays off plays when 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 you send in a play, Clint has an alternative. Does he have a alternative play to go to, or does he just read himself and make call a different play? Oh, it, it sometimes he's got multiple options. Sometimes he has no options. Uh, sometimes he calls a different play altogether. You know, and it, it, that that that's where Clint has definitely matured uh, and developed. Uh, you know, I, I I judge his his mental performance every bit as much as we do what his you know the stats are or you know the overall performance. I mean, there's a lot of things that happens throughout the course of the game that nobody knows other than me and him and probably Shannon. You know, just as far as what actually was signaled to him. What was said in meetings, as far as if, you, if we call this play and you see this, do that. He's at a point where he understands all that, and he can come to the sidelines, and I can say, "Well, why didn't you make this adjustment?" And he goes, ah, no. and he gets it. He understands it. Where a year ago, it would been, I would have said that, and it would have just went right over his head. So, there, there's multiple options. Uh, how many specifically? Would you know? Just it's different from play to play. The, uh, is part of that being a coach's son, and you also mentioned. You also mentioned the fact that he knows what's going on. Like he has a locker room presence. Uh, is, is, explain that a little well, bit. Well, he just he grew up. He's much like my son. When when <clears throat> I don't know if y'all seen my son running around here, Logan. I mean, he runs through the building. <clears throat> he hangs out downstairs, plays pool with him, plays catch, gets a workout with Mike. I mean, you know that that was Clint. You know uh, that was Clint probably about five, six, seven, eight years ago, nine, ten years ago, <laughs> whatever it was. But, but anyway, he, he has that kind of uh, uh, knowledge when it comes to how things work in a locker room, which is probably different than what you think it is. Uh, but, but he understands how important that locker room is and how you relate to a lot of these guys uh, from many different backgrounds, from uh, you know, many different interests and all that. But uh, then the knowledge of the game, just because he's a smart kid, he understands the game, he's been around it, and now he understands what we're trying to do. So you, you put all that stuff together, and right now we have a, a more winning offensive per performance than what we saw at any point last year. Hopefully we can keep it up. OU's got many challenges that we got to that we got to fight. Pete, you made one of those running plays that you kind of frown upon early. Um, it took a pretty good hit in the sideline. It looked like. Did you see what happened there? And, and did you know that he was prone and looked like motionless? Oh, he's fine. He's just faking. Vacant. <laughs> <laughs> you got the wind knocked out of him a little bit. So, ah, uh, it is, you know, it, it was just, it was something that we do a good bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know what's so hard about that damn pass because he's, he's, it's the only pass he hasn't completed. You know, one to Cody, one to Eli, one, and then to this one, you know, the guy was right behind him. He just didn't feel like it. So he, so he was like, should I trigger it? Should I trigger it? Should I trigger it? And then he said, no, he didn't. And he took a hit because of it. So it's what we've been talking about, make the decisions, get the ball out of your hands. Uh, he didn't do that, so he took a hit and laid there for a second and then jumped up and played great after that. 
I don't mind the fourth. I know what you're talking about. Uh, I, I, I thought the fourth and one decision was the right decision. The call was bad. It was a bad call. That's all. Danny, yeah. you faced other mobile quarterbacks in Sims and obviously C.J. Brown. Is uh, Trevor Knight similar? Obviously, he runs as well, but similar styles, different styles? Are mobile quarterbacks all, all the same? or some Well, different? no. No, they're not. He's more dynamic. He's, he's, he's got more twitch. His ceiling's a lot higher. He's a sophomore. You know, those other guys are seniors. I think, you know, fifth year senior, sixth year senior, seventh year seniors, whatever it is. Uh, <clears throat> but he's he's just getting started. You know, he's got a lot of football ahead of him. He's a, he's a, he's a big time talent that that is young and will continue to get better. But he's he's a little bit more dynamic with twitch and athleticism. You mentioned you'd like to run 100 plays a game, and, and that. In this game here, Oklahoma will play fast too. Yeah, they will. I mean, did you see 200 plays in this game? You think? A lot goes into it. You know, uh, it, it could happen. It depends on if offenses are efficient and can get first downs and convert third downs. It, you know, whether we can, whether they can, a lot goes into that. Field position has something to do with that. So you can't. I mean, you look at um, them and Baylor last year, both pretty fast. And there's their plays were in the 70s. You know, so I, you know, 100 plays in a game is a lot. I mean, having 108 is a lot. I mean, us being able to average 91 right now is a far cry from where it was a year ago at 71, which is a whole heck of a lot different than 108. So a lot goes into it. I'm not going to sit there and study it. I'm going to call plays and hopefully we get first downs. All right. Thank you. Thank you.